Donald Trump has filled another cabinet position, naming former Texas Governor Rick Perry to lead the Energy Department. Joining us now to discuss is WSJ reporter Amy Harder from our Washington Bureau. Hi, Amy. Many viewers will recall this moment from the 2011 presidential primaries that effectively ended Mr. Perry's presidential bid. Let's take a listen. And I will tell you, it's three agencies of government when I get there that are gone. Commerce, education, and the, uh, uh, what's the third one there? Let's see. God. I can't. The third one I can't. Sorry. Oops. And, and by the way, that was the Department of Energy I was reaching for a while ago. So, uh, um. That debate gaffe notwithstanding, he did campaign on eliminating the Department of Energy. So can we now assume that Perry will not dismantle the department he's been tapped to lead? Well, thanks for having me on. I, I think we can assume that he won't dismantle the Energy Department. Uh, politicians often say one thing on the campaign trail and then they get into government and it's a very different situation. I think it's safe to say though that perhaps his knowledge of the energy department is, is not as deep as perhaps those at the energy department and others um, in the government. Um, the energy department has a $30 billion budget and most of that, 60 percent of it, goes to protecting the U.S.'s nuclear arsenal. So, um, so I think it's safe to say he won't dismantle it. I do think, though, that the Trump transition team has already indicated that they do want to slim it down uh, where they can across the department. Now, as a staunchly conservative addition to Mr. Trump's cabinet, what kind of leadership would Mr. Perry likely provide? I think Mr. Perry is going to provide um, a, a similar conservative voice than a lot of the other cabinet picks that Mr. Trump, President-elect Trump, has picked already. He was governor, Mr. Perry was governor uh, for almost 15 years of Texas. And so I think you'll see him put some reliable conservative issues when it comes to, for example, energy um, research and development into energy technologies, focusing perhaps more on oil, natural gas, and coal as opposed to renewable energy, which was a focus uh, for the Obama administration. Is he a climate change skeptic? He is. Um, we have seen a couple of his comments on this issue in the primary debates, both early in this last cycle and also when he ran in 2012 cycle, where he, he hasn't commented on it too much, but when he does, he says simply that he thinks the question is not settled and then goes on to say that um, the U.S. shouldn't drastically change its economy and hurt, potentially hurt American workers for something that is not settled. Of course, the science is settled, um, but that is a comment um, that um, Governor Perry has made before. Uh, but Mr. Perry does stand out for many other Republicans in that he supports renewable energy. Is that right? Namely, wind? He does. Um, Texas, along with being the biggest producer of oil and natural gas, is also now the, the U.S.'s biggest producer of wind energy. In 2005, he signed a piece of legislation that required a drastic increase in wind production throughout Texas. So I do think, perhaps more so than some of the other people that he could have picked, uh, Mr. Perry will is actually a good sign for some of the renewable energy interests throughout the country. And I think you will see an increase. You will see some focus on that as well, perhaps more than otherwise. Now, um, Mr. Perry has been a harsh critic of the president-elect in the past, calling Trump, quote, a cancer to conservatism during the 2016 presidential race. Have these hatchets been buried? Well, I think time will tell. I think it's also important to note that uh, Mr. Trump himself uh, in 2015 um, mocked Perry and implying that he wasn't very smart, that he had to wear spectacles so people will think he's smart. And of course, now he's tapped him as his energy secretary. So I think a lot of these things, again, are things that you say on the campaign trail that don't um, translate into reality. However, one would think that there's at least some sort of grain of truth in what some of these things that that comes out of their mouth. So I think there's probably going to be some mending of the bridges uh, come time January 20th. Right. All right. Now, as you mentioned, uh, Mr. Perry served as governor of Texas for 14 years. But on the lighter side, more recently, he has appeared on Dancing with the Stars, hasn't he? We can take a little, a little listen for a few moments. I've seen a lot of I've been around the world. 
lighter side of the soon-to-be Secretary of Energy. Perhaps he shares a bit of the showbiz bug with Mr. Trump. <laughs> Right, definitely. As I was doing research on Mr. Perry ahead of this nomination, I, in fact, did not realize he was on that show. I'm, I'm not a watcher of Dancing with the Stars. But when you put in his name into Google, uh, the Google search box, that's what pops up first. So I would reckon to say that most Americans outside of Texas will actually know him more for Dancing with the Stars than his time as governor, even though he was the longest serving governor in Texas. Um, on Dancing with the Stars, he was among the first to be eliminated, so I don't think he will be dancing much at the energy. <laughs> no, still the power of popular TV. All right, Amy Harder, thank you so much for that. Thanks for having me.